Friends, did you know in 1890, the famous Harvard psychologist, William James, wrote a book called The Principles of Psychology. In that book, he claimed that personality was set in plaster by early adulthood. This viewpoint remained popular for over a century. Think about that. You were either born with certain traits like people skills and leadership skills or not. And if not, there was nothing you could do to change it. The idea that personality can be improved and developed is a fairly recent one, thankfully. Things have changed. Researchers in epigenetics now believe that you can even affect which genes become active and which ones stay dormant by modifying your behavior. So my friends, good news, you are no longer the prisoner of your genes. You have the ability to reinvent yourself. Suppose uh, you were not born a natural people person like me. Now, just the fact that I'm a motivational speaker does not mean that I was born a natural extrovert. That's far from the truth. I worked on it and the good news is that you too can develop this vital aspect of your personality called people skills. The ability to effectively work with other human beings, which I believe is even more important than your ability to work with cutting edge technology. You see, technology doesn't run the world. People do. Technology is just an enabler. It's people who make decisions. It's people who call the shots. And if you're not able to collaborate, connect, and communicate effectively with your fellow human beings, you will miss out on so many opportunities in your career and business. And no amount of technical skills can make up for that deficit of people skills. So let's jump right into it. 10 tips to improve your people skills and your overall personality. And this by no means is an exhaustive list. These are the 10 things that were top of my mind, which I feel can, are really actionable and can help you take your people skills and your overall personality to the next level. Number one, listen intently. Listen intently. You know what friends? The best gift you can give to others in a digital, distracted world is the gift of your undivided attention. Becoming a good listener will help you build rapport and understanding with other people. You will become more patient in the process and your responses will become more relevant and specific. Bottom line, in a world obsessed with tooting your own horn, good listeners stand out and command the attention and respect of others. Number two, read to learn. I love this quote by American journalist Margaret Fuller who said, today a reader, tomorrow a leader. Develop the habit of reading on diverse subjects. And the keyword here is diverse. You know, when we read, we explore new areas of knowledge. Our mind expands and gets exposed to various situations, especially when you're reading fiction. If your brain would be under an MRI scan, you'll see different parts of your brain would light up. You're doing a lot of scenario building, what if thinking, there's so much going on. That's why I always prefer reading over watching, which I believe is a more passive activity. Reading helps you become a balanced and a more well-rounded personality, improves multiple cognitive abilities, such as critical thinking, creativity, problem solving. Overall, I believe, my friends, reading makes you an interesting person to be around. And apart from books, also develop the, heart, the art and the habit of reading people as well. And you will soon realize that reading books was way easier than reading people. Well, jokes apart, reading people, listening to their stories, observing human behavior, and reading in general on diverse subjects is going to enrich your personality. Number three, talk to people, initiate conversations, and be at your conversational best. If you don't talk to strangers, you'll never make new friends. Now, we were, we were conditioned to believe as young kids, don't talk to strangers, don't talk to strangers. But we know the truth, if we don't talk to strangers, we never make any new friends. So enter into as many conversations as you possibly can. You see, some things, cannot be learned theoretically. Swimming cannot be learned theoretically. Leadership cannot be learned theoretically. You must jump into the pool to learn swimming. You must be with people to, to, in order to influence them and understand them so that you can lead them. In the same way, a great conversation can teach you so much more than any book ever will. A great conversation can inspire, inform, and ignite new ideas. 
You see here uh, in our office at Cutting Edge, we, over the last year, we started this new initiative. It's called the Beginner's Mind Show. And I've, and I've listened to and interviewed in so many incredible people from across the world and learned more in the process than any book or university would ever teach me. My friends, learning to start and have a deep, meaningful, enriching conversation is an art. And it's an art that you can master with practice. I highly recommend you watch um, the, this episode of Beginner's Mind series. We shot with uh, Susan Rowan, who's the author of the book uh, called How to Work a Room. Wonderful, actionable insights in that Beginner's Mind series. We'll share the link. And if you're afraid of rejection, when I say about, when I talk about starting initiating conversations, I highly recommend you go watch Jia Jiang's 100 Days of Rejection TED Talk. You know, wonderful social experiment right in front of you with loads of lessons of how this guy built his immunity against rejection. Number four, become aware of the tone of your voice. You see, many people complain about how others reacted unfairly to something trivial that they might have said. Oh, I didn't even say anything. I, I don't know why he reacted so much. Well, only a few sit down to reflect on what they might have done to provoke that response. When I studied NLP, one of the basic foundational principles of NLP, they call it the presuppositions, is the meaning of the communication is the response that you get. If you understood this, if you've understood this, please type it in the comment section. The meaning of communication is the response that you get. So if you don't get the desired response, that means your communication was not on track. The essence of communication is getting the response that you want. All communication is directed towards a certain response, right? If you're not getting the response that you wanted, I think it's time to self-reflect. I bet nine times out of 10, the reason for a, a overreaction or from somebody else is usually the tone of your voice or your body language. Something so subtle at a subconscious level that you probably wouldn't even notice. An offensive tone will do far more damage to your relationships than bad language ever will. Now that doesn't mean you go about using foul language. On the contrary, we are very careful about the words we use, but not about but the tone of our voice. Okay, so that was number four. Be mindful of the tone of your voice. Ready for number five now? This is what I want you to do. Take a deep breath in, inhale, and affirm to yourself, I am enough. I am enough. This is coming from Marissa Peer, who's the founder of the Rapid Transformational Therapy, and I had the pleasure of interviewing her. And I love this affirmation from Marissa, which is reminding yourself frequently that you are enough. Friends, if this video is about treating others with respect, I, you should start by treating yourself with respect. Be comfortable with who you are and affirm frequently that you are enough. Becoming a people pleaser is the wrong strategy to develop your people skills. On the contrary, in my experience, I've learned that if I love and respect myself and enjoy my own company, others will too. Be yourself. Perhaps Ralph Waldo Emerson said it best, to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else, that is the greatest, greatest achievement. Number six, positivity in every situation. Think about this. When was the last time you were with someone optimistic? I'm sure it was probably a long time ago. When was the last, of course, we're not counting this video in that. <laughs> when was the last time you were with someone who was constantly complaining and whining? I'm pretty sure this is likely to be very, very recent because that's what the statistics say. One out of two is a constant complainer. So if it's not you, it's probably the person sitting next to you. But quick question here, who would you rather spend time with? The optimist or the complainer? The lifter or the leaner? Here's the thing, my friends, positivity is infectious. The moment you are in the presence of a positive person, you feel an instant increase in the levels of energy and dynamism. Be that positive person, smile warmly, remain cheerful, look for solutions to problems, respond instead of reacting, brighten your life and of those around you. You see, people will automatically be drawn to you because you are a rare species. And that's what positive people are these days, a rare species. Number seven, find the humor in small things in life. Look out for the lighter moments in life because they brighten it. 
just like these lights have brightened up our studio. <laughs> you see, everyone wants to be in the company of people who like to laugh and not take life too seriously. And you don't need to be a stand-up comedian to inject a little humor here and there in every, everyday situations. I suggest you practice mindfulness. Being in the moment more often, and you too can use these fleeting everyday moments to diffuse stress even while you're extremely busy. Happiness, my friends, is a state of mind. What we need to do is to cultivate it. A good sense of humor is a top-rated personality trait that draws other people to you. In the words of Ella Wheeler Wilcox, laugh and the world laughs with you. Weep and you weep alone. Number eight, become a lifter. Take a deep breath in, inhale, and say out loud, I commit to becoming a lifter. Okay, if that sounded weird, <laughs> say out loud while you're watching this video. Do me a favor, type this in the comment section, I commit to becoming a lifter. You see, most of us want to succeed and expect support from others, yet we never imagine ourselves in the position of a support provider or a lifter. The truth is, everyone's fighting their own battles, and a kind word of recognition or a pat on the back or a smile to a stranger will go a long way to heal, to uplift, and connect. Be a lifter, my friends, as well as a problem solver. These people will always be in demand, the lifters and the problem solvers. And to talk about problem solving, we created um, a dead, an extensive video on this subject, which is called the five steps to becoming a better problem solver. We'll leave the connection, uh, the link for you um, in the description above. Be a lifter and a problem solver. You will find that there is way less competition in this club and you will always be in demand because these folks, they, they again are in the minority. The majority are leaners. The majority are complainers. Ready for number nine now? Treat others with respect, okay? Treat others with respect. Golden rule, treat other people as you would like to be treated, okay? Platinum rule, treat other people as they would like to be treated, but learn to respect differences. If others' viewpoints don't conform to yours, don't be disrespectful. If they don't look like you, worship the same God like you, or eat like you, that's not a reason to be rude. This quote by Maya Angelou says it all. I've learned that people will forget what you said. You see, we have a short-term memory when it comes to words. I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. So be mindful of this because people will never forget how you made them feel. Be mindful. Don't judge books by their covers. And when it comes to people, don't judge people at all. Instead, read them like you'd read a good book. And then you'll have loads to learn from their successes and their mistakes. And remember, it's the diversity of thoughts, backgrounds, and cultures that ignites innovation. So welcome this diversity, embrace it, respect others and thrive in this diversity. Number 10, develop a genuine interest in people, including yourself. According to the McKinsey Institute, my friends, as many as half of our current work activities have the potential to be automated. In a few decades from now, more than half of job activities that exist today will no longer be needed, will disappear altogether. I quote from the McKinsey magazine, as AI takes over many technical tasks, human-centric skills such as empathy, creativity, agility will increasingly take center stage. And yet, and yet we take far more interest in the latest cutting edge technologies than we do in the good old fashioned human beings that surround us. I'd say this is the wrong strategy. Make learning about people and leadership communication and interpersonal skills your top priority. And just like learning technical skills, you can acquire these skills too. Okay, it's, it's, I, granted, it's not as simple as that. People don't behave like gadgets in a linear way. People are unpredictable and that's why this will be more challenging than learning how to write code, for example. And it'll be more fun too. So also remember to set apart time to learn about yourself. 
It's funny how people these days know more about their mobile phones than they do about themselves. For example, suppose I ask you to describe the 10 features of your new phone versus describing 10 of your strengths. I'm pretty sure you'll do a terrific job explaining the phone, but struggle with describing yourself. Go on, try it. Leave us a note in the comment section. My top 10 strengths are dash, dash, dash. And let's see whether it, it comes very naturally and effortlessly to you, or do you have to struggle in describing yourself, okay? Then do the same with your phone or your laptop or something else, and let's see the difference. No one's perfect, my friends, but the journey towards excellence starts with self-exploration. Aristotle has said this beautifully, knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. Knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. Your ability to connect and engage with other people, their journey begins by knowing yourself. In closing, this is what I'd say to you, my friends. Honor yourself. Love yourself. Learn to enjoy your own company. Ensure your cup is overflowing. That will ensure that you fill other people up too and not merely seek their company for approval or validation. I'll leave you with this powerful quote from Mahatma Gandhi who said, as human beings, our greatness lies not so much in being able to remake the world, that is the myth of the atomic age, as in being able to remake ourselves. Our greatness lies in our ability to remake, reinvent, and transform ourselves. We all have the power to remake ourselves. Just start, take small steps, create a plan, stick with it, and be consistent. I'd highly recommend this book when it comes to understanding the human nature. It's called The Laws of Human Nature by Robert Greene. Quite an extensive study of the multiple dimensions of human nature. Great storytelling, great anecdotes from history. Overall, a wonderful book to read. You'll find the link in the description below. As far as video recommendations go, just look for the cards in the video and wherever we have a detailed video on any of the skills we talked about, you can click on that link and go and watch that. Towards the end of this video, we will also leave for you a playlist that we created on interpersonal skills and communication skills. Thank you so much for watching.